Hello and welcome to another impromptu mini project. Mini, mini projects with Dayton. For months now, people have been requesting that I build, more than anything else, a wireless phone charger. And I always look at these comments and go, you have one inductor in the plate. You have another inductor either on your phone or in your phone. You set the phone down, boom, it's a transformer. Now power is being moved wirelessly. That's it. That's it. That's, that's all this is. It, there's really nothing to it. It's a transformer. It is a stupid, simple one-to-one -one transformer. But still, the question keeps coming up in the comments. Build a wireless phone charger. 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 Okay, fine. I built one. Are you happy now? <coughs> okay. Enough of my ranting and into my ravings. Let me show you how to build or a really trashy wireless phone charger, but it'll get the point across. Now I have here a few different flavors and coils, all made out of junk because I thought it was funny. Here I have a solenoid of very thin copper wire wound around half a wire spool, and here I have a much more flat sheet wound around the center of a CD case. And I also have um, the exact same thing made out of some thicker 15 gauge wire. So here is the setup that I'll be demonstrating with. I'm sorry if this video sounds like a really bad ASMR, but this is the only way I know how to record audio while pointing my camera at other things. This uh, flat primary coil I have hooked up to the function generator, which is outputting about a hundred kilohertz at five volts peak to peak, so it's a medium range wave. And the oscilloscope is reading the open circuit voltage on this coil right here. So uh, I have the output turned on right now. You can see what happens when I bring this secondary coil near the primary. So what we've just accomplished is making a transformer, and if I did my winding correctly, this should be a one-to-one -one transformer, which means that the voltage on the output is the same as the voltage on the input. But these circuits tend to be very lossy, and that's because we're probably not oscillating at the resonant frequency of the circuit. There we go. As I bring the frequency up, you can see that more power is being transferred into the output. However, it only goes so far. If I go too high in frequency, it begins dropping off again. So now that I have this circuit tuned at its resonant frequency, which is about 4 to 6 megahertz, and I have a LED on the output, which is also being read by the oscilloscope, as I take this coil and move it over the primary, you can see that power is being transferred into the secondary coil depending on the distance away from the primary coil, as well as other things like resonant frequencies and the amplitude of the voltage. Those all affect the power that we get on our output. We can tell that we're at the resonant frequency right now based on the brightness of this LED. So if we were to bring the frequency down, which I can control by this knob, we see that the LED gets dimmer and goes out. And the same problem occurs in the other direction. If we bring it up to the resonant frequency and then move past it in the other direction, it also dims, which means that we're only getting enough power to turn on the LED at or around its resonant frequency. So we have our AC input coming into the breadboard from the coil. What we need to do now is convert it into DC. The first step is to add a thing called a bridge rectifier, which takes the positive half of a sine wave. So what we want to do now is add a capacitor on the output of the bridge rectifier. This will hold the voltage very near its maximum value. Now from here we can put an output terminal so that we can actually send this signal out to whatever it is that we want to charge. So now this circuit is complete and it's giving us a 5 volt DC output, that's the blue line on the oscilloscope, on this output terminal right here. And we can see by putting an LED on it that we are in fact getting power there. Okay, so this is my phone. It's nothing special and I have my charger around here. Alright, so let's check the output on this just to make sure that it's the number that we're looking for. And now we check the voltage on the end of these wires. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely getting some here. That's about 5 volts. 
give or take. There we go, five volts. That's exactly what's going into charging my phone. So that's the number that we need to get right there. Now the only thing that remains is to put our phone charging cable that we cut into the output of this circuit and now we have the 5 volts necessary to charge our phone. But I'm not sure that this puny function generator with its 100 milliamps of output and the efficiency that we have here is going to be enough to charge our phone. But we can certainly try anyway. Now that we've added a load onto the circuit, our 5 volts DC has dropped to about 3.5 volts, which means that this circuit's not supplying enough power to the phone, and the voltage drops as a result. Well, unfortunately, as I expected, this tiny little setup just ain't gonna cut the mustard, because this coil can't deliver enough power from the function generator, since the function generator itself can only supply 100 milliamps. I need a new idea. Come on, think, think, think. The transformer, it is a stupid, simple one. Down here we have a 2,000 volt this microwave transformer. Brain blast! All right, so there are lots of transformers and not all of them are highly tuned like this one that I'm using with my phone, but Transformers that are abundant that can supply a lot of power are microwave transformers. And all I need to do is remove the secondary coil and replace it with another primary coil so I can have a one-to-one -one transformer. Well, it makes a lot more sense in my head. Let me just show you what I mean. I have taken two microwave oven transformers and cut them in half, so now only the primary coils are exposed. Whereupon setting one on top of the other, I now have a one-to-one -one transformer that was designed to operate at city voltage. This is either a really stupid idea or pure genius. Can't wait to find out. You see, these transformer coils do not mess around. Each of them are rated for a thousand watts, and they work pretty well around 60 hertz. In fact, with this setup here, I could probably wirelessly power a mini fridge. Observe. 60 watt incandescent light bulb, the most inefficient that I could find. Uh, let's compare the input current to the output current really quick to find the overall efficiency of this system. 7.2 amps on the input, and 1.6 amps on the output. Doing a little bit of head math, that means that this system is less than 20% efficient. <laughs> Can't say I'm surprised. Well, that settles it. Even with an efficiency akin to Congress, this big kahuna can still supply enough power to turn on a lamp and more than enough power to charge a phone. Oh, and in case you were wondering if I tried to charge my phone using the microwave transformer, I did. It exploded. Alright, now let me ask you a question. What's even the point of wireless charging pads? I mean, your phone has to sit on the pad the whole time, the pad has to be plugged in, not to mention the huge inefficiency. Just seems overly complicated to me to do the exact same thing as plugging your phone in. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully I did a competent job of helping you understand the physics that makes wireless charging tick. If you have questions, please ask me below, and... And don't forget to like that smash button and subscribe to PewDiePie and stuff. Bye!